So we've heard time and again today that when young adults do well, communities do well, our entire nation does well. And I think this index has been a powerful, powerful example of just what happens when we get those stars aligned. So how do we create more ladders of opportunity for young adults in this country? First, I think we have to recognize that most young adults don't have the luxury of attending full-time school through grade 16 and then going to work. The truth is that the pathways that they take are, var are varied, and we need an equally robust set of paths for them to take so that they can achieve their full potential. The workforce is changing, the workplace is changing, we need pathways to reflect this. So I'm gonna briefly walk through our plan and the eight core ideas at the center of it, and we're gonna be spending much of the time from now on really focusing on the particular ideas here that we think are gonna make a powerful difference in creating opportunity. First, we need to increase the number of pathways to one, two, and four-year credentials and degrees. We should be expanding accelerated learning programs, earn and learn programs, early colleges. This is an area of tremendous innovation that's making high school and post-secondary education more relevant and increasing persistence and completion. Kate Matthews, a 20-year-old from our coalition partner, the Roosevelt Institute, supported this idea with a brief on the importance of expanding dual enrollment programs because they're a cost-effective solution to sending more students to college while saving money along the way. Second, career and technical education can be a powerful pathway for, back, for young adults of all backgrounds. Who doesn't believe that being exposed to workplace and career pathways can help? The average high school graduation rates for students concentrating in CTE programs is 90.8%, far higher than the national average for traditional high school paths. Perkins, as you know, is a critical funding source, and we must use its reauthorization to improve it. This was a game-changing pathway for Amelia Powers, whom we'll hear from later today. Amelia was a high school student with no plans for college, who wasn't particularly engaged until she enrolled in one of her high school's career and technical education career clusters through Skills USA. She discovered a natural talent for automotive technology, went on to, went on to get her BS degree, and now works as a regional parts manager for Caterpillar. She credits CTE, particularly because it was paired with other college and career ready programs for making her high school experience more relevant and better. This country is lucky to have her. We must lift up this pathway for all young adults. We have to incentivize innovation with CTE, within CTE that rewards programs that work through a competitive grant program. We've seen how race to the top spurred innovation we should build on that success. IBM's P-Tech Academy is just one great example of an innovative public-private partnership. You're gonna hear a lot more about that in our next panel. But while we're fostering innovation, we must also support programs that work. In this room alone, there are many, many programs that are collaborative, data-driven, and have young people at the center. Demand for these programs that far outstrips supply we should be sustaining and expanding programs that currently produce economically quantifiable results for young adults and employers. We should also pilot pay for success programs that leverage private sector support of innovation. Now, quick show of hands. How many of you owe a job or part of your success to a mentor? Family member, coach, volunteer? For me, it was a guy named Mr. George Mangan, a high school, an irascible high school teacher who taught me how to write and encourage me to aim high. We know that mentoring works, and it's something all of us can do. Mentoring drives school completion, keeps young people on the career ladder. Number six, we have to acknowledge that this life, that life is complicated, and some young adults fall off the ladder of opportunity. Youth opportunity grants are a powerful way to reconnect young adults because they coordinate the public school system, the juvenile justice system, the private sector, and community-based solutions and there's studies that prove their effectiveness. Miami-Dade College, one of our members of our Higher Education Council, has done an extraordinary job of collaborating with the K through 12 system and employers to build secure, secure pipelines all the way to a W-2. We should foster these collaborations. Seventh, we know how critical the advice and input of guidance counselors are, yet on average, high school guidance counselors have 476 students to support. We should be using technology to develop a single web portal where students can monitor their progress, make sure they're taking the right courses, and we can also make sure that they, are taking, uh, that they get exposed to all the kind of career options that they need. If we pair this with a college savings account, 
we have a chance to reach many more low-income students and increase access to college. Senators Rubio and Coons from both sides, two legislators we're going to hear from later this afternoon, have co-sponsored a similar bill that's going to, that we're going to hear about later on today. And finally, we have to engage employers. Employers can provide internships, help with continuing education, and of course, jobs. There have been powerful partnerships where employers, nonprofits, community colleges, and foundations have come together to make enormous differences in communities. One of, our call, one of our calls to action today is to encourage companies to use the White House Council for Community Solutions Employer Toolkit, a really powerful online tool to help employers assess how well their capacity to engage with young adults. So if you're sitting next to an employer today, and I'm thrilled about how many employers are here in this room today, tell them about the toolkit. So these are the eight core ideas of our plan. Together, they form the basis of our shared plan. We're going to be discussing all these ideas in much more detail in our breakout sessions and over lunch. Everyone in this room is doing incredible work that's focused on promoting opportunity. But we really do believe with these eight ideas, we can come together to take this to a higher level. I'd like now to introduce our next panel, made up of some of the most innovative programs already aligned with our plan and having an, imp an impact all around the country. Again, many of you are doing a lot of this work already, but we're excited about the fact that these programs have really come together to show that, in fact, the ideas in the plan are already in place and making a difference.